Finding the right dog is a process. And the first step in that process is analyzing your situation. Do you have an open ranching situation where you need the dogs to stay with the flock and you have a lot of land and no neighbors? Or have you just bought mm, five acres and you're just so happy to create a little homesteading situation for yourself. And um, recently you've learned that, um, yeah, your chickens and goats are being decimated nightly by, I don't know, raccoons, foxes, bears. The reason why I bring this up is because the specific needs of each situation is going to be different. And I figure the ranching families have this handled. So these videos are for the newbies who likely have neighbors and have to keep their dogs on their property to um, preserve harmony. So, when you get a livestock guardian dog, my suggestion is you pay attention to the instincts your dog shows you that they have and then work with those instincts. As homesteaders, you have more flexibility in how you do things. So, this is all kind of theoretical. So, by way of example, um, Bonnie and Clyde my Great Pyrenees Akbosh mixes of dubious origins, um, were never safe with chickens. Yes, I did train them. They wouldn't eat chickens if I was around. They knew I didn't want them to eat the chickens, but uh, they did it anyway, <laughs> waiting patiently for me to be out of sight. So I trained Bonnie and Clyde to respect an electric fence, and then I kept the chickens um, behind the fence. Problem solved. Which brings me to the sheep. Bonnie and Clyde are good with sheep. So during the day, I could leave them out with the sheep. At night, I locked the sheep up so Bonnie and Clyde could focus on keeping the bear out of the orchards. And as you can imagine, that's a big job for two dogs. Believe me, they look so tired at the, you know, when they came in for breakfast in the morning. Yeah, it, it was a lot to ask of two dogs. And then, you know, I think I mentioned in the other video, we have ravines. So it, it was a big job up and down the ravines, you know, 24-7. <laughs> so anyway, I started to look into um, adding another dog to the pack. I ended up importing a purebred torn yak puppy, beautiful dog, that we named Doc. And yes, I did take time to train him. And dun da da, Doc ended up never being safe with livestock. Yep, you heard correctly. Yeah, it's a little dirty secret. <laughs> you can do everything right and still get a dog that's not safe with livestock. Mm hmm, yep. So, uh, yeah, these things can happen. And you know what? It's good. It's fine, honestly. And for my situation as a homesteader, it's completely fine. I mean, is it a disaster for me? No, it's not. I had a situation that was working during the day. Bonnie and Clyde were watching out with the sheep. And then at night, Doc happily provided muscle for bear duty. So I ended up, what I needed, what I wanted was a dog to help take some of the load off of Bonnie and Clyde. So, as you enter the livestock guarding dog world, you will hear a lot about instincts and training. The bottom line is when you get a dog, no matter where you get the dog from, there are no guarantees. I think the dogs are invaluable. But just like people, dogs have their own personality, drives, and instincts. So analyze your situation and pick the best puppy you can with the resources you have and then work with the dog you get. That's my practical advice. As And I mean, I'm living perfectly bear-free with my imperfect dogs. So for all the people that are new to this, I hope this helps as you navigate finding a livestock guardian dog for your situation.